Good morning and welcome to week four of PA 122. This week we are in chapter seven of your book and it is <clears throat> Home Infusion Pharmacy. So if you've never heard of Home Infusion Pharmacy, this will be a way for you to look into uh, what this is about and maybe something you might choose for a career. So a your discussion question is on defining home infusion pharmacy and then compare and contrast it to like a traditional hospital pharmacy. So I'd like you to read your chapter first before you actually do your discussion question. So I'm going to start in chapter seven. It starts on page 135 and it gives you um, some introduction there. <clears throat> I want to start with what a home infusion pharmacy is. It is defined as the pharmacy that prepares and dispenses infusion therapies to patients in home and alternative sites. So basically what that means is it is a pharmacy, but then it dispenses things for um, medications, uh, equipment, for patients to use at home. And so here are some example or examples of types of home infusion therapies. An anti-infective therapy, so like if you have to send home antibiotics, pain management therapy, chemotherapy, nutrition therapy, hydration therapy, biotechnology therapy, and then there are a couple of miscellaneous um, therapies. And again, this requires that a patient be able to uh, go home from the hospital. And some advantages of that is that it is really more uh, beneficial for the patient because they're in their home. Uh, it is cheaper for them to be in their home and not staying in the hospital. So if a home infusion pharmacy can send home these medications with them, all over it's just better for the patient. The one thing that I think that is um, so interesting is that they can see, send home chemotherapy. So that, um, you know, we've all heard of those cancer patients who probably um, need chemotherapy for the rest of their lives and what a blessing that they can do it in their own home and they can take that treatment maybe on a weekly basis in their own home. So I think the uh, technology that we've gotten to in pharmacy is excellent. Like I love that we can uh, be part of this technology where people don't have to come into clinics anymore and they don't have to come into the hospital and receive these treatments that a nurse can go out and um, give these treatments to the patient. This is just, it's excellent. And I think um, not only does it provide jobs for nurses, it provides jobs for pharmacy technicians to help get these uh, equipment and things ready. It goes in to talk about there are different elements and having um, the different equipment and supplies like on 139. So a variety of equipment is found in the home infusion pharmacy. Most of this equipment can also be found in a traditional hospital pharmacy. So this is where you can compare. They're, they're quite a bit the same because we're doing almost the same work, but um, and includes a horizontal and vertical laminar flow hood. So we're going to be doing some um, gowning and gloving in a home infusion pharmacy. We're going to do some aseptic technique there. Uh, we're doing some compounding. Uh, they, they have controlled two substances, computer hardware printers, and then other specialized equipment consists of infusion devices and IV poles that are sent to the patient's home for administration of the infusion therapies. And so I remember that we serviced a home infusion pharmacy at my last job, and they had just a huge room full of equipment that the patients would check out and take home with them. So traditional hospital supplies found in the home infusion pharmacy consist of needles, dispensing pins, IV containers, filters, IV tubing, pads, gowns, you know, some of all that. And you're gonna sell that in the home infusion pharmacy so that they can just take that whole bundle home with them and then be treated at home. And so similar, similar, excuse me, to a hospital pharmacy is you're gonna find the exact same equipment. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> the home infusion therapy process and the pharmacy patient assessment. assessment. So here the pharmacist really is going to be all about education. He or she is going to have to talk to the patient about 
what it looks like at home, how it's going to be given. Um, maybe they have a caregiver who is a family member, and so it's going to be explained to that family member on how to give the medication and how to monitor that medication. So it talks a little bit about that going into 140. And then the prescription filling process in a home infusion pharmacy. It says the process of filling and dispensing a prescription order in a home infusion pharmacy differs in several ways from the process used to dispense a prescription in any other type of pharmacy practice. A prescription order for an infusion therapy originates from a physician. Same. They usually receive in the home infusion pharmacy <clears throat> by a fax machine, but it may also be received by phone or electronically. The prescription order must contain all the necessary information and it goes on to say the steps and then filled by the pharmacy technician just like you would see in a regular pharmacy. But where does it become different? The prescription label for a home infusion therapy is different from a prescription label required for infusion therapy used in a hospital. A home infusion prescription is required to be an outpatient prescription, so it must be labeled according to a state and federal requirements for outpatient prescription. It must pres contain a prescription number, date, patient's name, physician's name, drug name, concentration of the drug, diluent, rate, and frequency of administration, pharmacy's initials, and expiration date. The total amount of drug or nutrient in each container in any pump setting should be included on the label. This is where it's different. The total amount of drug that is given <clears throat> in the infusion device. The patient and the caregiver should be able to understand the prescription label. So that is part of the education that the pharmacist must give. It's then compounded, administered to the patient, and then excellent aseptic technique is required to safeguard and sterilize any of these infusion mixtures, just kind of like what we talked about. And then giving a report. They have different reports in your book that you can look over. And then um, it also goes into the different devices for home infusion, like the catheters, um, the central venous catheters, the ports, those type of things that have to be cleared, have to be um, in so that the patient can receive these therapies at home. So I think this is so interesting that this part of pharmacy is out there and that you as a technician can work there and help in a home infusion pharmacy. If you're in the St. Louis area, I know of one. If you want to go and just watch for a day or shadow, let me know. I would love to get in touch with them and uh, set you up for that. I hope you have a great week and you've learned a lot about home infusion therapy. Chapter seven is a long uh, chapter, so make sure that you look at all of that before you do answer your discussion question. I think it sure will help you to help um, come up with uh, things that are different and the same uh, with a traditional hospital pharmacy and with a home infusion therapy pharmacy. Have a great week and talk to you soon.